Good morning, Scott Street Church. I want to welcome you all here this morning on Sunday, October 28th. Um, I have a couple announcements uh, from our bulletin. If you don't know me, my name is Phil Clausen. I'm one of the staff here at Scott Street. Um, and I just want to welcome you, whether you're here in the building with us or joining us online or via the stream to Tabor Manor, we want to welcome you here to worship with us. In your bulletins, you'll find a few announcements, uh, but I have a couple announcements that are not in your bulletin, so you'll want to pay attention right now. Um, in the back foyer, you'll find a couple different things as you leave the service today, or maybe as you entered, you saw them. There's a whole table of dishes, plates, cups, bowls from downstairs. These are extra and we are getting rid of them. So if you would like them, you can take them today. Whatever does not get taken will be donated, uh, so have no worries about it going to waste. But if you had your eye on one of the specific plates that looks the same as all the other ones, you should take that before you leave today. Next Sunday, I want to remind everyone that we are turning our clocks back, so make sure you're not early for church. Uh, on Wednesday this week, there will not be Junior Youth or Kids Club, so if you have kids or grandkids in those programs, just make a note of that. And one other announcement that is not in our bulletin is that the Women's Ministry uh, DVD series is coming up on November 6th at 7 p.m. Uh, about the powerful influence of a godly woman by Kay Arthur, and that will be great, so be sure to remember that. Um, You'll also find your November calendar in the bulletin. I encourage you to take note of what's going on this month at Scott Street. Um, and before we move into worship, worship I just want to invite you all to stand up and welcome those around you. And uh, yeah, welcome them here to Scott Street. As you're settling back in, I, I'd ask you to stay standing with me as I open our service in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for meeting us here today. Uh, we know that you're going to be here. Uh, at, where two or three are gathered, you are there also, and we're, we're excited to have you here with us this morning in this building, in this place. Um, we thank you for your love and your faithfulness. and. Uh, specifically today, as it's uh, Communion Sunday, we, th we remember the great sacrifice that you made for each and every one of us. Um, yeah, we pray that our music and worship would be pleasing to you this morning and that, um, that you, would, uh, you would look down on us and, and continue, to, to continue that great love that you have for us. In your name we pray, amen. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this morning we have... Uh, Emily Plett here, leading worship for us. She's from Grantham MB. I'm sure many of you know her well, um, and we're excited to have her lead us this morning. So yes, please remain standing as we begin our worship this morning. As Phil mentioned, um, my husband Jordan and I are happy to be here from Grantham. We bring you greetings uh, from the rest of the congregation there, and we are looking forward to worshiping together with you this morning. So please join us.
We invite the ushers to come forward at this time for our morning offering. Let's pray together. God, we're thankful that you've brought us here this morning. Uh, we're thankful that we can, yeah, be here together and choose to uh, take time out of our week uh, to gather and to learn to... Um, Yeah, just uh, as a community, choose to, to say thank you um, in this way. Um, yeah, in the same way that you've chosen to, to love us, we, uh, we choose also to, to be here and, and be a part of what's going on in our community. So God, we're so thankful for... Um, yeah, all that you've given to us, all you've blessed us with. And right now we choose to give a little bit of that back. Um, and it's our prayer that you would cause us to be generous. Um, and we also uh, recognize and understand that that's not, generosity is not an amount. It's, uh, it's a state of, of being, it's a state of our heart and um, and so we ask that whether it's in large amounts or small amounts, that you would cause us to be generous people. And that, would use, that you would use what we give now to, um, yeah, to show the love of Christ uh, through all the various projects that we have going on here, that, that the love of Christ would be shown. And so we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. invite you to sing along with us.
like to call all the kids ages 3 to 10 to come join me up here at the front. Good morning, children. So I'm not normally the person who does this, welcomes you up here, right? Who normally does this? Kelly. So can we do an I Spy game right now? Do we see Kelly here this morning? Let's look. She is here. Oh my goodness. Kelly, can we call you up to join us? Okay, so some of you didn't see her, but here she is, and aren't we glad that she's here with us right now? So as our congregation knows, as our children know, Kelly is is no longer going to be joining us, right? Because where is she going? Who remembers where she's going? Does anybody else? England. Kelly is going to England. That's a big deal, and Kelly, I just want to say a few words of thanks to you. So for the past few years, Kelly has been working here, and I've been working with her. Um, Even before that, though, Kelly was here working with our children. Um, I've actually been working with Kelly since she was a teenager. So can you guys picture Kelly as a teenager? What? (laughs) Ten years ago. (laughs) So it's true, 10 years ago, she was a teenager. So I've been working with Kelly since she was a teenager, and Kelly, I have seen you grow so much over these years, and it's been awesome to see you just always conscious of what God is doing in your life and around your life. You have the gift of loving people and being so loyal and loving to them, regardless of of what they're going through. And so as a church, we have been blessed to have you here and to see you love not only our children, but our entire congregation. Um, Kelly's love for all of us, for this church family, is so big. And Kelly, we've been blessed to have you with us. And as you go, you are going with our blessing and with our prayers behind you. Know that Just because you're in England, that doesn't mean you're not part of our church family. You belong to us, and we belong to you. And so um, our our prayers and our support will be with you. And so we're actually going to take some time to pray for her right now. And do you guys remember what we did? This was already a few months ago when Kelly was preaching for our entire church, and we actually together laid hands on her to pray a blessing on her, right? And so again, this is something that we do sometimes, Because even though Pastor Rob will be the one praying, all of us are going to be praying for Kelly as well. And so let's gather around her right now, and let's put our hands on her. And church, if you you also want to join in this, just put your hands forward and, and pray along with us as we bless Kelly right now. Put your hand on her shoulder, or, or you can take her hand. There you go. Can you reach? There we go. Isn't it beautiful to see the children praying? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you, and we love Kelly. We thank you for using her for her whole life, for growing up here and taking care of so many people. and. And from a teenager to a a beautiful, strong woman, we're thankful for what you have made of her. We're thankful for her example of service and leadership. And we ask, Father, that you would bless her and her journey to England. Father, we don't know what the future holds, but we know that you hold her future in your hands. So we ask that you would go ahead of her, as you promised to do, prepare the way, give her friends, give her places to, to... to eat and meet people and, to, and, a, and a new kind of family in England. And to, we ask that she would be as loved there as she is loved here. We thank you for these beautiful children and for their open hearts and for the love that they received from Kelly. We pray for every boy and girl here this morning that they would grow up to be a servant like Kelly, 
Father, that they would serve your church and, and love one another as in an example in the way that Kelly has. So bless our beloved children and bless Kelly on her journey. Our prayers and our love go with her. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So you're going to go downstairs now. Good morning. As the children leave for their time, um, I'd like to remind you of the prayer insert that is part of your bulletin. Uh, you'll have a list of, of people and ministries within our congregation to pray for. There are two that I'd like to add to that. So if you could remember these two people in your prayer this week, Jake Hebert has been ask, is asking for prayer because he's still suffering uh, from some effects of his stroke. And the, also Pam Bernay, uh, her mom has, uh, fa has fallen and broken her hip. So if you would add those two prayer requests, please. Bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are our cornerstone. And here we are as your people gathered. We're here to praise and to worship you. And we acknowledge our need of your grace and your love. We thank you and praise you for just for who you are, Father. You are our creator. You are our Father, a heavenly Father who loves us unconditionally. And uh, sometimes that just is so overwhelming, Father, that we don't even know how to respond. But, Father, we do have some needs within our congregation. Some of them will have been spoken about. Others are among us, and we haven't shared them. We want to remember, first of all, our elders and our staff, Rodney Mandau, David Dirksen, and Sabrina Weintz this week, especially for the whole board, Father, that they would be uh, able, that they would have hearts and minds to be able to hear your guidance. We pray for Pastor Rob as he is ministering to us as well. And uh, just pray that you would continue to give him boldness to preach your word. And uh, just thank you and praise you for him, Father. We also need uh, have uh, those that have lost loved ones within our congregation. We pray for Rudy um, and Bertha Hine, Rudy's father, David, who passed away. We pray for the family that they would have comfort from you, but also comfort from your people that are around them. Um, we also want to hold Carmen and Austin. Dick, before you this morning, Father, Aust uh, Carmen is attending school in Kingston, and we just pray that your hand be upon them, that you would protect them and hold them in your care. Um, we pray for our mission partner, the Vision Thailand, as they are... Um, doing your work in Thailand, Father, that the pastors in Thailand would remain true to your word and that you would draw people to you in Thailand. And Father, there are among us, uh, among us that need healing. We pray for Marta Funk and Elfie Mason and, and Paula Brown as she is undergoing surgery, but also healing from surgery that she has had. Just hold them before you, Father that you would touch their bodies, but also their spirits, their inner beings, that they would know that you are there holding them and healing them. Father, we pray for Jake Hebert as he is still suffering from, from his stroke, and we pray that your hand be also upon him and draw him and surround him with your healing love and touch his body as well, Father, we pray. And for Pam's mom, as, as she's laying in a hospital, probably in pain from her broken hip, that you would also draw her to you and touch her with your hands and your, surround her with your loving arms. There are among us, Father, that are confined to homes, and this week we remember, 
Cooper, Anne-Marie Behrman, and Annie Friesen. We pray that um, they not be felt left out, that they would be um, continue to feel that they are part of your kingdom and your family here. And so, Father, as we go into the rest of our service this morning, may what we sing and what we say and what we do be all an honor to you, that as we continue and to worship you in remembering you in our communion service, that we truly, truly remember that your body was broken for us and that your blood was shed for us. And that he took, Jesus took that penalty that belonged to us. And so we now have the ability and the privilege and the joy to be able to come to you as, our, as you as our Father. And so we thank you again for this morning. And we pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading comes from Luke 22, verses 14 to 23. When the hour came, he reclined at the table, and the apostles with him. Then he said to them, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is, fin- until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he he also took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant established by my blood. It is shed for you. But look, the hand of the one betraying me is at the table with me. All of us will reach a crossroads in life, a decision that has to be made. Some can be small, and insignificant. Others seem like they could shape the course of our entire lives. How can we know the will of God? How can we correctly choose the path he has set out for us? And what if we make the wrong decision? We spend sleepless nights and days filled with anxiety when we place these burdens upon ourselves. Often we become isolated, feeling completely alone in finding the right answer. Sometimes we're tempted to rush into a decision. Other times we'd rather delay indefinitely. But for those who call him Father, for those who believe in the power of his name, he provides everything we need to follow his will. He gives us his word as a compass and inspiration. Those who live according to scripture will always follow in his footsteps. He blesses us with wise counsel through his church and the leaders he has set in place. He hears our every prayer, granting peace and wisdom to those who ask. His very spirit dwells in us, a still small voice that guides from within our hearts. And in his perfect timing, he will open doors. He will clear the way forward. And no matter the path you choose, you are never alone. He will walk beside you and enfold you with his love from now until the end of eternity. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Good morning, church family. It's good to be together today. Thank you, David, for the video. You can see our, our footsteps of faith, following the footsteps of faith logo up there. Thank you to the church family for adopting this as our, our yearly theme on our 75th year of following Christ. My name is Pastor Rob, and, and I am so blessed to, <clears throat> to serve you and to be here today on this Communion Sunday. Um, we are going to look again at our Mennonite Brethren Confession of Faith and look with fresh eyes at, at something that we, we've done many times. Today we're looking at communion, the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist, three different names for the same things. Sometimes we do something so many times that we forget what we are doing. Sometimes I'm driving along and I forget that I've had 93.3 on my radio. <clears throat> this is CFBN, 93.3, St. Lawrence Seaway. <laughs> Bridge 1 is available. <laughs> Bridge 3A is available. Next boat in 10 minutes. Have you ever left that on and, and then realized, why am I listening to this? For like 20 minutes, I'm listening to this... <clears throat> we get so used to things that sometimes we, we forget what we're doing. We can't take the Lord's Supper lightly. But it's something that many of us have done many times. How many of us are 75 years of age or older? 75 or older. So one or two of us are 75 years or older. Actually, our statistics would say about, uh, about 50% or more of us are 75 or older. Did you know that if you were brought to church on the first Sunday that you were born, that you worship 3,955 times? You've had 3,955 Sundays. So how many times has there been communion in 75 years? 988 communions. Almost 1,000 times you've eaten the bread. You've had the cup. It's amazing. So today I want to refresh our understanding of the importance and the meaning of the Lord's Supper. Here's what our Mennonite Brethren Confession says about the Lord's Supper. Thank you, my sweet. <clears throat> you know, I, I'm, I'm fine all morning until I get up in the pulpit and then I, I need a little drink of water. Thank you, sweetie. 31 years and she still brings me a glass of water. Isn't that a gift? Thank you, sweetie. I'm going to take you for lunch. <laughs> as a church, we observe the Lord's Supper. This is straight from the, the Mennonite Confession. As instituted by Christ. The Supper points to Christ, whose body was broken for us, whose blood was shed to assure salvation for believers, and to establish a new covenant. In the Supper... The church identifies with the life of Christ given for the redemption of humanity and proclaims the Lord's death until he comes. Is that our understanding? That's, that's as articulated by the Mennonite Brethren Confession. That's our understanding. The Supper expresses the fellowship and unity of all believers with Christ. Look at, look at the elements. That is fellowship and that is unity. Fellowship and unity. It is a supper of great words, a supper of remembrance, celebration, and praise. Look at the elements again. Those beautiful silver trays representing remembrance, celebration, and praise, which strengthens believers for true discipleship and service. This is strength. This is strength. This is not something to be taken lightly. 
Mennonite brethren have used the word sign to talk about the meaning of the supper. It represents these things, these elements represent both God's saving action and new covenant in Christ and the recommitment of believers to faithfulness in covenant with God and fellow believers. These things, these plates, these elements represent a recommitment. Every communion we recommit. Is this your understanding? This is, this is our scriptural understanding and it's part of our confession. This is what it is. Here's a little bit more from the confession about the question. It's always interesting. People have different ideas about who can take part in the Lord's Supper. So one of the larger issues around the Lord's Supper is the age of readiness. Are we old enough? Are we ready for communion? When young uh, Christians are old enough to participate in the Lord's Supper, they are those who, it is those who, all of those who have understood what it means. Confess Jesus Christ as Lord in word and deed. Are accountable to their congregation and are living in right relationship with God and others. All of those are people who are invited to participate in the Lord's Supper. Do you understand? Then welcome to the Supper. Do you confess Christ as Lord? Welcome to the Supper. Oh, can we go back, Dave? Are you accountable to the congregation? Are you praying and, and a part of this congregation? Is it an important part of your life? Welcome to the Supper. And lastly, are you living in right relationship? Do you need forgiveness today? Yes, you do. Yes, I do. I am ready for communion. The confession puts it this way, that if you've understood, confess, live in right relationship, that you are ready for the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper, the word means sharing Christ. That's a supper. You, I'd love to have someone come into the church today who's never been in a church, and they'd see these, these beautiful silver plates at the front, and they'd say, what's that? We could say, that's the Lord's Supper. It's sharing Christ. We could say, it's communion. It's something we do together. This is not about being alone. This is about us communing together. Lastly, it's called the Eucharist. And you may remember I preached a few weeks ago, Eucharist is a Greek word that means thanksgiving. So this is thanksgiving. Lord's Supper, communion, Eucharist. They all mean the same thing. Whatever we call it is an important to remember why we, Christ did this, why we do this every month. It's important to remember who he shared the table with the first time he had communion. And it's important to remember the background of communion. So let's go back to the old covenant. There was a meal. Jesus was sitting with his disciples getting ready for something called the Passover. The Passover was a meal that was practiced by the Jews that reminded them of their deliverance from Egypt. They had a meal, and it reminded them of deliverance from Egypt. Does this remind us of deliverance from Egypt? Well, maybe a little bit, but it really reminds us of Christ, who is the fulfillment of the deliverance from Egypt. The Passover meal engages all the senses, as does this. We see something with our eyes. We hear beautiful music. We sing the words communion, forgiveness. We touch. We pass a plate. We feel the bread in the cup. We taste. Something goes into us at communion. We smell. You can smell the, the, the cup as it passes by. All of our senses are engaged in communion, as well as our heart, our mind, and our soul. It's a powerful event, the communion celebration. It's designed to touch every part of our lives. Sometimes we, we kind of feel like the communion is an add-on after a service. It's something we do every month, and we kind of have to do it. No, it's not that. It's so much more than that. Let's go back to the original Passover. 
So if you remember the story of the Passover, it's pretty extreme. The Lord required each Hebrew family to cover their doorposts and their lintels. So uh, the little piece of wood or stone above the door and the doorposts. They were to cover them with blood. They were to paint the blood of the sacrificial lamb on the doorposts and the lintels. And after they've done that, they were to eat the sacrificed lamb. In a terrible moment of judgment, under the cover of darkness, the Lord would send a deadly plague throughout the land of Egypt in judgment for their oppression and their disobedience. The plague would kill the firstborn. Do you remember this? It's terrible. It would kill a firstborn male child in every Egyptian family, as well as the firstborn male livestock. So it impacted your family your life, your world. The only way for the Hebrew family to escape judgment, which was aimed at Egypt, was to do as the Lord commanded, to put the blood of the lamb around the door. So they covered the doorposts. They covered the lentils, lentils with the blood of the lamb. And the, the Lord saw the blood and he did what? He passed over, passed over them, resulting in their salvation of their children and their livestock not being killed. This is a powerful, redemptive act of God that convinced the Egyptian pharaohs to set these people free. So our Lord's Supper is born out of the Passover meal. There's a background to it. Some people say that the Lord's Supper is a meal for yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, looking back at the Passover meal, looking at Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Today, giving thanks and seeking to live obedient, disciplined, glorifying God lives. And forever, looking forward to living and serving Christ in eternity. It's a meal of yesterday, today, and forever. This is one wonderful, mysterious meal, isn't it? It's wonderful. So, again, imagine that someone new to our Christian faith would hear me talk about this. I, I would expect that they would say, well, why aren't you having a feast? This is so important. Where is all the food and all the drink? And our response would be, we love to eat and drink together. You should have been here for the FASPA. <laughs> you know, we love, we love having meals together. Christians eat together well. And eating together is part of God's plan for us. We have communion, but we also have FASPA and Christmas meals and Wednesday lunches and Thursday community meals. We love to eat together. But the Lord's Supper is not about food and drink, is it? These are symbols of something much larger. We take a small piece of bread. We take a small cup of juice. And these small things have huge significance. Small things, but with huge significance. When we share the meal together, we proclaim, God reigns in me. And now, and I'm looking forward to his kingdom come. As we share the meal together, we proclaim, he has come, he is here, and he's coming again. This meal is incredible yesterday today and forever we take the cup and we take the bread with hope in our hearts and looking forward to an eternity with Christ when there will be no more sickness there will be no more pain no more grief tears oppression of all kinds no more hunger no more death that's what we're saying when we're taking communion we're looking forward to the our eternity with Christ and as we're eating and drinking, in light of the beautiful truth of Christ and his love for us, we're reminded of who we are and the life that God intended for us. What is our life supposed to be like? As we take the bread and the cup today, we are saying, I will live a life of love, of joy, of peace, of patience, of kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control. We're saying a lot, aren't we? as we take communion. Very powerful meal. The Lord's Supper is about God changing us, making us more like Him, including Him in our lives. 
So this meal is more than just symbolic. It is a moment of faith-forming, soul-shaping, life-giving mystery. Yeah. Faith-forming, soul-shaping, life-giving mystery. It's a mystery because though the bread may not actually become the body of Christ, you may have heard the word transubstantiation. And our Catholic friends believe that when the priest prays for the bread and the cup, they become the actual body and blood. That's called transubstantiation. We don't believe that. We don't believe that. But we believe that this is something important. That these, the bread and the cup, they genuinely communicate the spiritual reality of Christ's presence and saving work. The bread is the body. Jesus' body broken for us. It's salvation. The cup represents the blood, representing forgiveness. And although the wine may not become the actual blood of Christ, it genuinely communicates the spiritual reality of Christ's presence and forgiveness. Powerful, powerful symbols. This is communion, that word, communion, because we take it together. And as, as we take it, um, Rodney's going to remind us, as Rodney and I lead communion in just a minute, he's going to say, hold the bread, hold the cup, and we eat together. There's a significance to that. We are eating and drinking together. The communion elements, I love this, enter into us, into our bodies, into our minds and our hearts. It's a mystery because the meal of Jesus is not only present at the table, but Christ is at the table serving us. It's called the Lord's Supper. And he serves us his body and his blood today. Isn't that incredible? It's a mystery. It's also a mystery because the meal in the meal we remember death, his death, so that we may celebrate life. Death, his death to us means life. His blood to us means forgiveness. It, it's so incredible. As we celebrate with great humility the life he gave, we offer our lives to be used by him now and forever. Amen? So as we take communion this morning, pray. Let us pray, Lord, use us. Use your church. Use your people. Cleanse me. Purify me. Make me whole. And make me dangerous for you. Make me, give me the right words at the right time for the people I work with, for my neighbors, for the person next to me in the pew, for my wife, for my children and grandchildren. Make me yours. Transform me. That's what communion is about. This new covenant meal, eating the bread, drinking the wine of Christ by faith, trusting that what he said is true. Only a Messiah who is both king and lord of the universe could make such a heavenly, holy meal earthly possible. This is something unique to us as Christians, the sharing of this meal. And my prayer is that through the scripture that we've read and through this message that you may have a renewed love of the Lord's Supper and a renewed understanding of its significance. Amen? Amen. Let's, let's share the Lord's Supper together. As we participate this morning, I'd like to invite those that are going to serve, help us serve, to come forward. In 1 Corinthians, Paul shares with us um, his understanding and the meaning of communion. 
And I'll read from 1 Corinthians 11, from verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray for the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that you have made. Lord, we thank you for laying down your life for us on the cross. May this bread serve as a reminder of the great love you showed to us. Lord, we ask you to search our hearts. Forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. And as we participate in this act of remembrance this morning, in communion, Lord, we pray that you would unite us together in your love, Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body. You may be seated. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's give thanks for the cup. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our sacrificial lamb, that we no longer have to sacrifice an animal and shed its blood, but once and for all, you gave your blood, sacrificed your life for our forgiveness. We are grateful, and we understand that there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Thank you for giving your life for us. Father, we take the cup this morning into us, and we pray that as we take this cup, that you would be alive in us. Father, forgive us for actions and thoughts that do not glorify you. But Father, we, we stand today knowing that we are forgiven because of your love. So as you live in us, as we take the cup, be in our words, in our actions, in our life, in a powerful way. Father, that when people see us, that they will see Christ. Father, bless us as we take the cup together in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you
Please stand. Jesus said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of Christ's blood, his life, his death, and his resurrection, and be thankful. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for our closing song. We're going to sing, There is a Redeemer. and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to warn you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. As you leave today, please take the opportunity to sign up for the photo directory. We'll be signing up again today and the directory will be shot in two weeks' time. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>